dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly, we hail, starring Marie McDonald in Interrupted Honeymoon, a United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now, here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars. For those great names of stage and screen, join us in plays we know you'll enjoy. Our star is the gorgeous and talented actress, Marie McDonald. The title of our drama of suspense and action is Interrupted Honeymoon. Time now for our first act curtain. But first, here is our announcer with this message of importance. Young men and women, the United States Air Force offers you the finest aviation training in the world. And you earn while you learn. Under a new Air Force program, every effort is made to place you in the job for which you are best suited and have the best chances for success. You can become an aviation specialist with steady increase in pay, with job security, and a carefully planned program for promotions. For details, visit your U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station right away. And now, once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of Interrupted Honeymoon, starring Marie McDonald as Helen Winston. In a dank, well-hidden boathouse on a lonely Florida Key, Helen Winston is listening to the lapping waters of the rising tide. Squirming and twisting, she unsuccessfully attempts to loosen the ropes which bind her to a piling. Then, as the water creeps up to her ankles, she tries to ignore the present by thinking of the immediate past. It doesn't seem possible that just yesterday I was sharing a honeymoon with Ken. Or that when this tide reaches its peak, I'll be dead. Yesterday, just Ken and myself on that lonesome key. Happy, Mrs. Winston? Very, Mr. Winston. No regrets? Only one. Oh? I should have said yes the first time you asked me. Oh, Ken, I do love you. I adore you, darling. If we could only stay here for the rest of our lives. The world forgetting by the world forgot? Mm. Well, it was a wonderful dream while it lasted. What do you mean? Someone found us. Huh? Behind you. A man's coming up on the beach. Well, whatever he wants, the answer is no. Mr. Winston? Yes? Don't worry, dear. I'll get rid of him in a hurry. I got a telegram for you, Mr. Winston. Thank you. Yeah, you might want me to take back an answer. You better open it. Is it bad news, Ken? Well, inconvenient, at least. I have to go back to Washington immediately. Oh, but we've just started on our honeymoon, Ken. Can't it wait until we... I'm afraid not, darling. It's from the head of the department. He says it's urgent. Any answer? <laughs> Tell him you can't make it, Ken, that you've broken your leg or you've... The department doesn't accept excuses, Helen. If I had a broken neck, they'd expect me to be there. Uh, no answer. Very good, sir. Come on, Helen. Let's begin packing, dear. How can I lose things in just 24 hours? Now, I know I put those cufflinks in this drawer, and they... They're right on top of the dresser. Uh, they, uh, well, how'd they get there? That's where you left them. Oh. How long will we have to stay in Washington, Ken? We'll be back here tomorrow afternoon, darling. The chief's called the meeting for nine, and they never last more than an hour. Oh, well, then I won't go with you. What? Well, if you're going to be back here tomorrow afternoon, there's really no point in my going, too. I'll wait here. Oh, you're crazy. No, I'm not. I'm very practical. Why should we go to the expense of taking me to Washington when I can stay here for nothing? That's out of the question. Oh, 
Why? I wouldn't consider leaving you on his key alone. Oh, don't be silly, Ken. I don't want anything to happen to you, darling. What could happen? Well, I don't know, but well, I have to take the boat into Miami with me, and well, if anything did happen, you'd be absolutely cut off. You'll be back tomorrow afternoon. A lot could happen between now and then. Oh, what? I told you, I, I don't know, but, well, something could. Please, Ken. I want to stay. This is our honeymoon house, and I won't be alone. I'll be thinking of you every second that you're gone. Do you always get your own way? Only on important things. So, Ken, let me stay. And now, I'll never see him again. The water's rising rapidly. But I, I can't let myself think of that. I, I'll think of Ken. The smile on his face. The look in his eyes when he left me. The boat was hardly out of hailing distance before I missed him and regretted staying behind. By nightfall, I was terribly lonesome and a little frightened. A thick, heavy fog had settled down over the ocean and was creeping up the beach when a big motor cruiser silently pushed its bow through the gray blanket and eased up to our dock. It was company after those lonesome hours, so I rushed down to greet them. There was a great deal of activity aboard, but when I called to them, all sounds stopped, except the surf and my steps on the dock. Who are you? I might ask you the same thing. Go ahead. Why? What are you doing here? I happen to belong here. Yeah? Not tonight you don't. Where's Winston? He went to... Uh, how does that concern you? Winston's gone, boys. Get those cattle on deck and unload them. You can't unload any cattle here. When my husband gets back... They'll be gone before your husband returns. Jump to it, you guys. I knew they're on the dock. Yeah. Grab that dame and bring her aboard. I certainly will I not. Got my orders. You better come quietly so I won't have to drag you. Take your hands off me. I'm sorry. You're hurting me. It wasn't my idea. You're the man who brought that telegram this afternoon. That's right. You should have gone with your husband. It have saved us all a lot of trouble now. Let's get aboard and see what oh, Jurgens wants. Let me... Oh. I struggled, but I was forced aboard the ship. Jurgens ordered me locked in his cabin, but not before I saw a long line of foreign-looking people being herded across the gangplank onto our dock. They were the cattle Jurgens had referred to, though I didn't learn that till later, when Jurgens came into my cabin. Everything cozy? It won't be for you. When my husband learns what has happened, he'll find out that why I was a fake. But it wasn't a fake. We have a friend in the department. He sends wires for us when we're unloading cattle. Cattle? Maybe sheep would be better. They're so anxious to get in the States, I'll take any kind of pushing around. They're aliens? <laughs> you don't think we're running these night excursions for citizens, do you? Yeah, they're aliens. Foreigners. Anybody with a thousand bucks and a yen to get into the States. I wish you'd drawn with your husband. So do I. Well, you'll have plenty to tell him the next time you see him in a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks? If you're lucky. I'm taking you to another key. Until after we dump our next load. If nothing goes wrong, I'll see that your husband finds out where you are. If nothing goes wrong? Yeah. But if we get knocked over, that'll make it a little rough for you. The water's almost up to my waist now. I know there's no escape because I made my choice this morning. A little after daybreak when Jurgens came back to my cabin. You awake? Yes. What do you want? Another look at you. I've been up on the bridge most of the night trying to remember just how good-looking you are. And Yeah, you are. Please. Don't pull away from me, baby. Don't do that. 
Oh, you like the smooth approach, huh? Okay, gorgeous. Anything you want, you get. Where are you taking me? You'll find out in a hurry. We're almost there. Now, how's about a little kiss, huh? No. Okay, I can wait. Just don't keep me waiting too long. Don't you worry about the possibility of the Coast Guard stopping you with me aboard? If the Coast Guard stops us, you won't be aboard, baby. What do you mean? Much as I'd hate to lose you, we just hit your window sash to your pretty neck and drop you down the trap. You wouldn't dare. Wouldn't I? Just last week, I had to get rid of some passengers that way. And I did. Brave man. It was either sink them or take a chance on 20 years. Oh. It already paid. I didn't lose anything. Come on, I'll make it. Give me that kiss. Please. Please wait till later. Okay, sister. But I'm warning you. If you want to rate with me, just remember, I don't go for the reluctant type. When the cruiser docked at this cave where I'm going to die, I was surprised by Jurgens telling me that I was free to walk about until he added that the waters were filled with sharks and that he'd be watching me. I hurried away from him, almost running... When one of the crews stopped me. Might as well take your time, lady. There's no place to run to. What do you want? A chance to help you? To protect you from Jurgens? <laughs> What's funny about that? Every man wants to protect a girl from every man but himself. Your husband like that, too? Of course not. You're taking in a lot of territory with that every man business, aren't you? My husband isn't the sort of man who'd smuggle aliens into the country or drown people to save himself. I know all about your husband. We're working for the same thing. What do you mean? Your husband works for one branch of the department. I'm in the Coast Guard. Coast Guard? Hey, quiet. You want to get me killed? Well, of course not. I'm working from the inside, trying to line up the evidence we need to put these rats away for life. Oh, it doesn't seem possible. I don't carry any identification. If this is true. You can depend on it, Mrs. Winston. What's your name? Jerry Walters. Jerry Walters. I've heard Jurgen talking about you. Keep away from him as much as possible. How can I keep away from him? I'm afraid I can't answer that. I, um... Uh, I don't want to jeopardize this mission, but... Uh, if Jurgen does catch you alone, yell your head off. I'll come if I can. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks for Thanks. what? I... Uh, I was, uh... <laughs> Just telling her that she'll be turned loose as soon as we've cleaned up. Who told you to tell her anything? Why, no one. Then don't talk to her again, see? You're the skipper. Remember that. You'll last longer. I'll remember. See that you do. Now get down to the warehouse and help them store that cargo. All right. No. We'll get back to where we were. Why don't you leave me alone? Because I got plans for you, baby. Big plans. Come on. We're going back to the boat where we can be alone. We pause briefly from our story, Interrupted Honeymoon, starring Marie McDonald, to bring you an important message from your government. Ladies and gentlemen, our Army and Air Force are critically short of physicians and dentists. Over 2,000 volunteers from these two professions are urgently needed today to safeguard and care for the health of the men and women who, as members of the United States Army and United States Air Force, are serving you and me at home and overseas. Young physicians and dentists, particularly those who did not serve in the armed services during World War II, have been asked by their government to act now to volunteer for duty at once. If you are one of these young physicians or dentists, please write or wire either the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force at once and volunteer your services. If you know of one of these young physicians or dentists, please call his attention to this urgent message. Thank you. curtain rises on Act Two of Interrupted Honeymoon, starring Marie McDonald as Helen Winston. Helen and Ken Winston had just begun their honeymoon on a lonely Florida Key when Helen's husband was called back to Washington, and Helen insisted upon waiting for him on the Key. 
That evening, a motor cruiser pushed its nose up to the dock, and Helen was forced to board. Now, bound in the bottom of a boathouse on another quay, Helen relives the past 24 terrifying hours. I shouldn't be afraid of dying now. I thought I'd experienced all the fear possible during that walk back with Jergens. He was as strong as a bull, and the grip he fastened on my arm bit in like an iron claw. As soon as we were aboard, he sent everyone else ashore, and then he locked me in his cabin while he went to get some liquor. I tried to get out, but he was back before I could make any headway. How's about a drink, baby? N- no, thanks. Ah, oh, come on. It'll relax you. You'll feel like living a little. I, I don't drink. Well, it's time you started. Here, I'll pour you one. There you are. <coughs> hey, what's the big idea? I told you, I don't drink. I said you were gonna. When I say anybody's gonna do anything, they do it. Remember that, baby. We'll get along better. Now, let's not have any more accidents. Get this down the hatch before I hold your nose and pour it down. I told you to go ashore. I was ashore. Well, go on back. I have something to report. Report, huh? It better be important. Well? Why, um, those supplies we're stowing in the warehouse are wet. So they're wet. We've eaten moly biscuit and like it. Now get ashore. Everybody else is ashore, aren't they? That's right. Well, uh, do you think that's safe? Don't you think someone should be in the radio room, just in case? Where's Sparks? He went fishing over on the other side of the quay. I can stand in for him if you want. Huh? Well, I'm no good at operating, but I can listen. If anything important comes through, I can tell you. Okay. Go ahead. Now get going. That kid isn't so bad at that. Smart. Now, baby, we can... Here, where's that drink I poured for you? Uh, I, I drank it. I knew you'd come around. Before long, you'll forget you ever had a husband. Now, come on over here and give me a kiss. Don't hang back like that. Here. I said, come on. You're hurting me. Think you're going to give me the runaround, huh? We'll see about that. No. Get away from me. Oh, Jerry. Get out of here. Let her go, Jerry. Why, you milk-faced. Look out, Jerry. You're all through here, see? I know that, Jerry. Well, get up so I knock you down again. I'm getting up, but you're not going to knock me down again, Jurgens. I ah, wait. Pull a gun on me, you punk. Jerry! Oh, Jerry! I'm sorry, Mrs. Winston. It just didn't work out. Oh, he's dead. If he isn't. He will be. Why did you do that? Shut up. I didn't know anyone could be as rotten cruel. I told you to shut up. He's dead now. That's all there is to it. Oh, no, it isn't. Jerry was Coast Guard. Coast Guard? Getting evidence against you. When he doesn't report, they'll start looking for him and... Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, baby. I really am. I won't bring him back. I wasn't worrying about him. I really liked you, baby. That's very flattering. I mean it. If that punk had just been a common sailor, I could haul the body out to sea, weigh it, and let it go. And you could never prove I'd killed anybody. You can't get away with killing a Coast Guardsman. Not when there's a witness. That's what makes it so tough, baby. I'm going to have to get rid of you, too. I didn't believe Jurgen's threat at first, because I didn't want to. But when he started coming toward me, I knew by his expression, frantic with fear, I snatched up the gun Jerry had dropped and backed away from Jurgen. But he kept coming toward me. Put that gun down. Stay away from me. I'll shoot. You haven't got the nerve. Put that gun down or I'll take it away. Give me that gun. Get away. Put the slug in me, will you? Jurgens, 
The bullet missed the bone. Yeah, I'm lucky. According to the message Spark got, we should be leaving now. You finished bandaging? Almost. Well, hurry up. we got to be shoving off. What's with the day? She's still out. You must have hit her harder than I thought. Drag her over here. Put her up in that chair. Face of me. Can you hear me, baby? I can hear you. The boys and I have to take a little run out to sea to pick up another load. While we're gone, you're going to be tied up nice and tight in the bottom of the boathouse. You're trying to frighten me. I'm past that. You think so now. But when the tide starts rolling in and the water creeps up around your pretty neck, you'll change your mind. Why don't you just take me with you? Throw me overboard like the others. Because this trip is business, baby. And I never mix business and pleasure. I was lying when I told Jurgens that nothing could frighten me now. The water's up to my chin and I'm terrified. I don't want to die. Oh, Ken. Ken, if I'd only listen to you, gone with you. No, I'll never see you again. I love you so. The water's beginning to rush now. And Ken, Ken, Ken. Well, Jergens, what do you say? Nothing. I'm not opening my trap until I've talked to my lawyer. The department can wait. If you can. You got nothing on me. Are you forgetting what happened to Mrs. Winston? Who's Mrs. Winston? Oh, I think you know. The young woman we found in the boathouse. I never saw her before. We think you did. Prove it. Maybe we will. She didn't tie herself in there. That doesn't prove that I did it. As a matter of fact, I couldn't tie anybody anywhere with this bum shoulder. Who shot you, Jurgens? I shot myself, cleaning a gun. Strange, there are no powder burns. The gun slipped out of my hands, went off when it hit the floor. That's all you have to say? That's all I have to say. Don't you think it's funny that we showed up with a Coast Guard cutter right where you were supposed to take on a load of aliens? Very funny. Planned it that way, Jurgens. How? I didn't know we were going out myself until a half hour before you grabbed us. I sent you the message to go out. Uh -huh. Yeah? Well, how'd you learn the latitude and longitude? Jerry Walters radioed it to us. Jerry? Jerry Walters? Yeah. He was in the radio room. He was smarter than I thought. Where is Jerry, Jurgens? How should I know? Ken? Yes, Captain. If your wife has recovered enough to face Jurgens, please bring her in. Oh, Ken, never, never leave me alone again. Never. If you'd gotten there a few minutes later, I... Oh, now try and forget it. I'll never be able to forget it. Yes, you will. I'll make you forget it. The chief has promised that as soon as we finish this Jurgens case, we can have six weeks leave. And then the next day you'll get a wire to report to Washington. No, no, not this time. No one will know where we're going. Where are we going? Any place you want. Any place? Any place. Then let's go to the desert, darling. I've had all the water I can stand. The curtain falls in the final act of Interrupted Honeymoon. Our star, Marie McDonald, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. This is important. This is urgent. Over 2,000 young physicians and dentists are needed as volunteers at once for service in the United States Army or United States Air Force. These physicians and dentists are required to safeguard the health 
of the men and women who are serving our country in the armed services. If you are a physician or a dentist, you are needed now. Write or wire the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force at once, volunteering for active duty. Let me repeat that. Write or wire the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force today. Or see your local U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. And now back at the microphone, our star, Marie McDonald, and our producer. Well, Marie, since we last saw you here in our theater, you've been a very busy person. I wish we could see you more often. Oh, I'd love to appear on your show, C.P. Truth of the matter is, we were so anxious to get here, we were half an hour early and had to kill time at the drive-in down the street. <laughs> now I know you mean it. But uh, let's get caught up on what you've been doing these past months. All right. How about characterology? Now, wait a minute. You analyzed me the last time, remember? <laughs> I know, but I didn't finish. <laughs> Just the same. I went through that once. So you still study. Well, I've branched out into child psychology. Now, you take the adult yourself, for instance. Marie. <laughs> All right, C.P. Now, by the way, let me extend an official welcome to you and Harry as the new ranch owners in Encino. You call it Twelve Oaks, don't you? No, Four Oaks. Special discount, you oh, know. <laughs> Twelve Oaks... Twelve Oaks was the plantation in Gone with the Wind. We're down to just four oaks. Beautiful, though. And you know, we have lots of citrus trees, peach, and walnut trees. Oh, it's lovely. And uh, how about your painting and the Kentucky thoroughbreds? Uh, you haven't forgotten your home state, have you? Oh, no, sir. I still paint, and Mother has the horses over in her ranch. Someday, I still hope to have that winner, you know. Why, well, we're counting on that. Now, uh, how about your latest picture? Well, this one isn't out yet, but it's my latest. It's with Roz Russell and Robert Cummings. It's scheduled to be released under the title, Tell It to the Judge. I think it'll be out in a couple of months. We'll all be on the lookout for it. Uh, that's a Columbia picture, then. Yes, that's right. Now, how about you, C.P.? Who's playing here with you next week? Next week, Marie, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you another one of our screen favorites, J. Carol Nash, who has also, in recent months, distinguished himself as a top-flight star in radio. He steps out of his radio personality, Luigi Vasco, to star with us in a dramatic play titled The Showers of Blessing. Oh, grand. And we'll be listening to it. Goodbye, C.P. Ask me again, won't you? Thank you, I will, Marie. Goodbye. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when Jake Carroll Nash stars in The Showers of Blessing. Until then, thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> Donald appeared through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars in this program. The script was by Bill Hampton, with the music of Eddie Dunsetter. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.